No, we can't. The easy update equation requires knowledge of the two neighboring hy's, but there is no hy to the left of the very first ez. This means we can't implement the update equation on the very first ez. And analogously, we can't implement the update equation on the very last ez either, because there's no hy component to the right of the very last ez. So in other words, you're only going to be applying the update equation to the internal EZs of the grid because they all have neighboring HYs. So what should we do at the last and the first EZ? To start simple, let's just not do anything with them for now, which means the first and the last EZ will be initialized to zero when we first create the EZ array at the beginning of the code. And if we never update or change them, then they will stay zero for all time stepping. This is the simplest boundary condition that we can implement in our model. Finally, in this second section of the code, we need to add a source to our simulation. Since we're initializing both of the EZ and HY arrays to zero at the beginning of the simulation, these two arrays are gonna stay zero over all time steps unless we add a source somewhere. So for simplicity, let's pick an EZ, maybe to start with, the EZ at imax divided by four. EZ at imax divided by four. And set it equal to a square pulse function. Because we want a pulse for our avalanche scenario. So just a very simple pulse here is a square pulse. So it's going to be equal to one at the beginning of the simulation when we first start our time stepping. And let's keep it on for, so it's gonna be on for, let's say 20 time steps. So for 20 DT, it's gonna be on. And after that, it'll be equal to zero. This is what's called a hard source because we are forcing an electric field to specific values. Well, this is a good start for the second section of the code. So now spend a couple minutes adding more detail to the third part of the code, where we want to save and plot any output, output we're interested in from the model.